Agent 6 is an ugly loser who doubles as a creep with a mad passion for talents. While on a mission to invade a whole new planet, he literally ends up showcasing his junk and getting two kingdoms into war. Six works for an evil organization called Kisaragi and despite being a total idiot he is one of their strongest agents. The two supreme leaders of the evil organization Kisaragi summon combat agent Six. They announce to deploy him as Kisaragi's spy and send him to another world on a mission to take over the place. Six patiently listens, agreeing to everything until the Dumbo realizes he's being shot off to a whole new planet. With a mouth hanging wide open he starts babbling and yells that if there is tech that can teleport people to another planet then he'd already be on one that's filled with big talents. He starts questioning everything in shock and even comments on the girl's costume. The two of them get angry, especially Belil. However, he shuts her up by asking if she can put those nice clothes in front of her parents. Still, Belil and Asteroth aren't backing off and order him to continue. They state that once they've conquered the world they'll dismiss all of their agents. That's not good news for the rotten head. His plan was to stay beside hot girls after the job is done. Six loses it and starts running after Asteroth begging her to marry him and bless his desperate self. As expected the idiot ends up with his hands frozen and soon the two girls take him to the Kisaragi labs. There they introduce him to one of the three leaders and Kisaraga's top scientist, Lilith the Dark, a lady that isn't so blessed talent-wise. She introduces a device to the three of them and six comments that it looks like a teleportation device. The dude gets awarded the title of a smart moron. Lilith then calls out Alice, a cute tiny gold-haired lady. Six who doesn't know the ABC of manners starts laughing, calling the little girl a kid and making ugly faces at her as if he wasn't already ugly. Alice calmly shuts him up and reveals that she's actually a high-spec pretty girl android who will guide him through the mission and if he keeps up his dog-like attitude then she can literally blast the core in her and level his brains out. Six immediately says he doesn't want to go with the bad-mouthed elf but he's got no choice. With that, Asteroth starts giving orders to the two of them. Firstly, Six and Alice have to plop into the new world, find a safe space and install the teleportation device there. And secondly, they have to spy on all the resources, soil and military threats on the planet. Six realizes that it's quite a big deal and asks why an idiot like him is chosen for it. Well that's because he's been around ever since Kisaragi was made and Asteroth considers him as one of the leaders. She starts going all softy, asking Six to take care and come back well. Belil jokes at the two to get a room but that was enough to trigger Six's rotten mind and he dives in drooling for a kiss. The dude is blessed with a whack from Asteroth's thick thighs and flies into the teleportation device. With that Lilith shuts him and Alice and only for Six to realize that the so-called genius scientist has tested the device in single digits. Poor guy keeps screaming curses but Lilith shoots him off to the other planet. Soon, Alice and Six find themselves falling from the sky and Six is properly shitting his pants. Thankfully Alice hands him a parachute and the two land. Six rages that they should set up a device immediately so he can go back. But that's not possible obviously and Alice gives him a dose of nanobots for some immunity. However lucky them. They've already spotted a town nearby and Alice thinks that they'll find human inhabitants on the new planet. She then asks how many evil points he has, something they can use to get resources from Kisaragi. They can earn evil points by doing evil deeds and the chips in their brains would award them the points. But of course Six has none because the potential creep has spent it all on spicy magazine. So while he and Alice are bickering, a bunch of strange creatures called Hegs attack them. Six starts running for his life and is almost eaten by one of them. The dude starts begging Alice to help but sadly she's just designed with the strength of a little girl. He takes back calling her a useless robot and soon Alice agrees to help. She uses his evil points to summon a shotgun and blows out Hegs' brains. Just then a bunch of horses come running towards them. Six being ugly loser glows up upon seeing a lady with big talents. The silvered-haired woman confronts the two in a strange language. Alice translates through her chip and dishes out a sob story saying that they have come from a faraway land where Six had led soldiers to protect the people. Six approves until Alice starts calling him a madman and how he lost the lady totally buys it and introduces herself as Snow. She's the commander of the Grace Kingdom's royal guard and even offers to give them jobs. However, why she was so willing to help becomes quite clear once they enter the town. It's totally filled with old hags near to their expiration dates. Snow brings the two before Princess Tilly's grace, and of course even here Six can't behave himself and starts drooling at the lady. Despite that Tilly's explains that they are low on soldiers thanks to the demons declaring war on them. Demons happen to be much more stronger than humans and have managed to wipe out a lot of them. She explains that they probably want their land since the Demon Lord, also known as the Sand King, turns massive pieces of land into deserts all the time. 
Tilly's practically begs Six to join and later Snow gets into the fight with the dude. She wants to be Tilly's eye candy and really worries for her image but thanks to the creep, he's running her image. Anyways she brings them to a rain artifact that used to help Grace Kingdom with rainfalls. However it has been broken and now they have to buy water from other kingdoms. Alice ends up patching it up for them, making Snow hop off happily. Behind her back, Six decides to goof around and puts a very creepy password for the artifact. It gets him some evil points but Tilly's ends up overhearing them and soon the two are tied up and thrown before the king. Alice easily figures out that it's Tilly's running the kingdom because the king is basically an empty brain. Tilly's then decides to let them off but Snow protests. She says that the two of them might be spies only for Six to smirk and say that makes Snow suspicious as well. Since she was the one who brought them into the kingdom, Snow is pissed but can do nothing. To her horror the worthless creep ends up becoming her senior executive officer. And now the two earthlings are not just her seniors but they start being rude and trashy to her. Anyways, Snow brings the two of them to the practice ground. It's practically looks like a bunch of old men doing their exercise for cranky joints. Snow hands Alice a couple resumes for their unit. But before she can call out anyone, Alice grabs her by the hair and asks her to call out the one she chose. The first one to step out is a little chimera girl who tries to act all tough and scary introducing herself as Rose. Of course Six won't miss out on the fun and joins her introducing himself as well. Alice just plainly calls Rose a nutcase. That embarrasses Rose and she begins apologizing and explains that it's her late granddad who told her to always sound sassy. Turns out she can absorb powers of whatever she eats and so far she has grown a dragon tail and horns. While she's jumping around with Six the second chosen candidate walks out, or should I say wheels out. A red-haired lady on a wheelchair introduces herself as Grim. The woman immediately gets down to business and asks Six if he's single. She's practically thirsty for a man. Six immediately gets interested until Snow starts yapping at her. Anyways, Six asks if Grim is a wizard but she kind of gets irritated at that and says that she takes the power from the god of undead and disaster. Grim basically performs miracles on the god's behalf. Judging from the tacky name, Six assumes the god's probably an evil one only for Grim to tick off. She starts teasing the man asking him to apologize and earn a flash in return. However poor Grim does not know how trashy Six is. He literally does the work of her and flips the entire skirt. Poor Grim breaks out in angry tears while Six yaps around calling her creep. Behind them, Snow tries taking command but is once again interrupted by Six calling her a demoted employee. She gets pretty pissed off and starts bragging about graduating from the finest academy unlike Six who's a high school dropout trash. The two get in an argument and Snow tells him to fight her without any hesitation. However no hesitation equals creep stuff to Six and he literally rizzes the lady. Snow goes mad at the worthless creep until Tilly's shows up and he ends up hiding behind her. As Snow stomps away, Tilly's explains that Snow worked pretty hard to become a commander. She was an orphan from the slums who worked her way up. That evening, both Alice and Six are given a place to rest. For safety reasons Alice tells Six to not do any creep stuff to her. She can't help him anyways because she has no riz. Six frowns saying he can't excite his man muscles for a robot. He then suggests doing something big and earning a hideout where they can easily install the teleportation device. However Alice tells him to not get too ahead of himself. Soon, the group hides on the cliffs watching as their little army of old hags advances onto the demons directly. Alice and Six point out that they clearly have been failing with that strategy. Instead Six proposes they attack the demon's supplies. With no supplies the ugly creatures would back off naturally. Rose is pretty excited to munch away and Alice allows her to take anything once they attack the supply. However, Snow breaks down and protests to fight directly. Otherwise she can't have any cash for her sword. Alice tells her to not worry and leave it to the idiot but genius Six. And soon the two of them plop down in front of the ogres shooting and slashing at them. Six pulls a classic villain tone and the green ugly things run away. He then orders Rose and she excitedly sets the carts on fire with her crimson breath. Just then a griffin shows up carrying another eye candy for Six to drool at. Once she lands, Six literally starts snapping away making extra sure to get those close shots of her. The demon lady introduces herself as Hine of the Flame, one of Demon Lord's Elite Four. She immediately senses that Six is some big shot and offers him to join the demon army. Lady even promises him lots of women and Six immediately agrees earning a massive punch from Alice. However he was just joking and once Hein realizes that, she attacks the poor dude. It's funny because no one even helps him and Grimm's totally snoozing in a corner. Luckily Alice manages to summon another weapon and shoots off at Hein making her wonder if Alice is a human or not. Just then another one of Demon Lord's elite, Gattelkan, drops into the party. And to Six's horror he whacks Grimm to death right then and there. Hein leaves the chat and Six is left traumatized. The girls desperately try to contain the massive demon and Six finally gets a hold of himself. 
He tells Rose to fetch Grimm and gets ready to go lethal on Gattelkan only for another demon to show up and call Gattelkan back. Six then asks for Grimm's funeral and is surprised to learn that she practically can't die. That's because she's Zenareth's archpriest. However because of it she's quite neglected and always sent off into crowds of enemies to fight and die alone. Six realizes Grace Kingdom is practically filled with shitheads like him. Anyways, they bring Grimm to Zenareth's temple and lay her down with a couple of offerings. Snow explains that the offerings must be things that are dear to people and they can just leave her at the altar. Grimm should be up by nightfall. With that she and Alice leave but Six decides to stay back. As nightfall hits, Grimm revives and is surprised to see Six waiting for her. He says he didn't wanted her to feel lonely making Grimm smile. She finds him nice and once again offers the dude a date. Six yaps with happiness and the two set off on a date. Six even summons her a super fast wheelchair and the two single losers rams it into actual couples out of jealousy. Grimm comments that unlike her Six and Alice can't revive, they should just quit the army and leave Grace Kingdom. But the worthless man has no such plan since for the first time he's surrounded by so many women. Six says it's practically a harem for him and he's never leaving. Just then they are caught by a police officer and Grimm tries putting one of her curses on her. She explains that her curses don't always work and in case they fail, they rebound on her. The lady then tries giving the officer a curse only to fail and collapse flashing her purple fit once again. Soon, the news of victory reaches to the king and top commanders who can't believe it. They begin questioning why the demons would just leave. Suddenly Six walks in with all the sass. He announces it's all thanks to him that they are finally winning. The army strategist, an old dude with a knocked out eye tells him to behave. He even tries to ridicule Six calling his unit full of lonely women and creeps. Six smirks and says that the same lonely creeps totally defeated the demon army and set their supply train on fire. The strategist ends up submitting to the idiot and Tilly's thanks him. She then explains that all they have to do now is wait for the chosen one to defeat the demon lord. Six's dumb head is confused and so she clarifies that in every war someone with the holy crest on their hand shows up. That person is destined to kill the demon lord after a couple trails. Hearing that Six whips out his hand showcasing the crest on his hand, he totally believes that he's the ultimate savior and says he just woke up with the mark this morning. But Tilly's low-key freaks out and points that the mark is from a lethal insect, whose bite can literally kill within seconds. Thanks to the nanobots, Six is alright. Tilly's then reveals that her brother already has the crest leaving the dude looking like a clown. Anyways, he returns back to find Rose running up to him. Turns out, Alice is trying to feed her a grasshopper. She reasons that Rose can become invincible if she eats it up. Six joins in and grabs the lady once Alice says she'll also give Rose some silicone to get her some talent. Rose protests hard and threatens to crimson breath the two retards. However the two wonder why Rose lets everyone boss her around when she's actually really strong with her ability. Rose says she was found by her granddad surrounded with artifacts. He was working on some miracle stone but ended up dying after he attempted forbidden magic. Rose practically has no memories of her past and people at Grace told her to work for them. In return they'll give her info on the research and where she was found. Six and Alice realize she's been taken advantage of but the bunch of shitheads decide to manipulate her for their own mission. The two start hopping around, slapping a Kisaragi badge on her and congratulating her with lots of clapping. Grim who's napping inside hears the clapping and the lonely women desperately dreams that she's getting married. Later on in their room, Six is once again sulking over his rotten luck with women. The dude has been hunting women, hiding behind corners to grab talents and have some flashes. Still he had zero luck. Alice sighs and literally places his hands on her making fake noises. The ungrateful dude screams saying he doesn't want to touch a robot's silicones. However Snow ends up hearing his sob story and yells at him from outside the door. She then tells him to join the new mission briefing. There, the general explains the situation. Turns out the Chosen One had tried attacking a demon-filled tower named Duster Tower. Only the so-called Savior got whacked and he's now injured. However, he insists that the army attack Duster at once because it has a very important treasure that would help them defeat the Demon Lord. However, Duster Tower is hollow with only a staircase going up and on the top two massive demons named Rista and Gil are waiting to crack some human bones. The only way they can fight is by walking up the stairs while killing demons. He asks if the strategist has any idea only for the old man to flip it onto Six. However Six is unbothered and calmly tells them to just set the whole thing on fire. He says they can set up a massive campfire in the middle and roast the demons into cooked meat. The sadist ends up making the whole table uncomfortable and the general naturally turns the idea down. Soon the war starts at Duster and instead of joining the army in combat, Six is just chilling brewing himself tea. He says they'll wait it out till evening and until Grimm's up from her sleep. He's totally pissing Snow off and she walks off. Six comments she's return all tired soon and true to his word she comes back exhausted at evening. As she angrily wakes up Grimm, Six begins preparing. 
He throws off all his armor as Alice hands him a stake gun and the group starts climbing the tower from outside. The noise from battle gives them the perfect camouflage. Alice is even getting a front seat view of Grimm's creep show. However, Snow is struggling and D6's happen as she ends up climbing on his back. Anyways they manage to sneak up to the top. There, Rista and Gil are boasting around unaware that they're about to get kicked. Six sneaks in and whacks Rista off the top. Unfortunately the demon goat manages to hang for his dear life. Six is totally enjoying himself and threatens Gil that he'll stone Rista down if he tries attacking them. By the time Rista makes it back up, Gil is all out. Six then annoys the hell out of the Rista and tells him to pay up with the treasure and get his brother back. The tactic works and the bunch of idiots end up winning the battle once again. Later on, Snow visits Alice and Six in their room. The two start annoying her as usual until she hands Six a massive bag full of gold. The guy has never seen this much his whole life and asks how much it's worth. Snow says it's enough for a family to live in luxury for a whole year. Six immediately tells Alice he's quitting Kisaragi. They used to basically pay him pennies and here he gets a whole lot of gold. Alice kind of agrees. Snow then hands Alice her payment as well and the two happily hug their earnings. One day, Six is called by the general. The idiot's annoyed because it was his day off but the general says it's an emergency. He explains that the treasure Six managed to get from Rista and Gil has opened a path. It leads to the demon lord's castle. However, Hein has already attacked their hero unit. Now the general wants Six to drop in and handle matters. Snow gets totally excited agreeing to the mission on spot. She whispers that they can get lots of cash for kicking some elite demons. However, Six has a sinking feeling that the popped eye strategist has something to do with this. The rotten face starts putting up a show and says that he's a big fan of Six. In reality, he just wants to get rid of him. Anyways, they soon find themselves on the battleground and while Snow is giving a pumped up speech Alice analyzes the enemy. It's clear that the strategist has sent them to die so she and Six decide to just stall around and pretend to fight Hein. That doesn't sit well with Snow. The lady even knocks out Grimm. However, it's not long before the enemy shows up together with Hein and her big talents. Behind her some stone monster looking creature walks up, making Snow explain that it's a golem. Looks like magic can do a lot of things on this planet. To their surprise the enemy starts breaking into pieces to attack them and before the creep commander could give orders everyone hops right into battle. Rose runs off to take a bite of the griffin and get some wings. While Snow whips out her new weapon, a lousy sword she got on a three-year loan. The muscle head then runs away charging at Hein and leaving Six and Alice behind. Alice then tells Six to handle the massive golem dude while she tries to wake up Grimm. The battleground becomes a total joke. On one hand Snow is trying her best to fight Hein and on the other Six is running around from the golem. The worthless man finally guts up and shoots at the golem only to run away and find that Grimm is still in the dream world. Once Golem appears behind him, Six tries punching it and ends up rolling on the floor. However the massive beast hasn't given up and hits down to crush Six. Thanks to his armor he manages to hold the Golem's strike. The dude starts screaming at Alice for help, but Alice says that she can't summon an explosive, because it's probably tea time at the headquarters. Six has no choice and orders his suite to release its limits. Just then Rose drops down as well complaining about how bad Griffin tastes. Six tells the little Chimera to jump away before he lifts up the whole Golem. Alice manages to place the explosive in time and Six throws the golem just as it explodes into pieces. Thanks to that Grimm finally wakes up but there's a problem. Six's suit is cooling down and he can't move for a while. He asks his crew to cover for him only for Snow to come crying. Turns out Hein totally melted her new sword and she starts screaming why Six can't move. Hein realizes that it's her time to shine and prepares to wipe off the bunch of idiots when suddenly Grimm puts one of her paralyzing curses on her. Thankfully it gives Six enough time to cool down and move again. The dude gets ready for some cheeks clapping on Hein but she decides to hit the creep weak spot. Hein once again starts offering Six lots of hot beast women and a chance to join them. Six totally gives in until Snow slashes out a strange stone from Hein. For some reason Hein goes white in horror. Grim realizes that it's magicite, basically a stone filled with lots of power. Without it Hein can't be in the Elite Four. Hearing that Six makes a creepy face at the beast lady, he's totally up to something. True to his worthless nature, Six ends up forcing Hein to do some shots for him. The whole troop watches her get in questionable positions while Six snaps away. Behind him, Snow is totally hyped but Rose starts feeling bad. She asks if they'll give the stone back to her and to Hein's horror. Six says he never agreed on giving it back. Hein totally starts crying and so Six agrees to give her the stone. Only the dude literally puts it in his shorts, ticking off Hein even more. Hein ends up retreating and screaming at him. Soon the human crew celebrates. Six is so happy that he announces to pay for everyone. He gets super drunk and starts catcalling women. Snow comments that he should just clean up his act and start acting like a commander. After all, he's a pretty decent guy but his creep head makes him look super bad. 
The whole table smirks at the lady and Six once again ridicules Snow. He calls her Tsundir who's totally in love with him, ticking Snow off. Anyways she throws the drunk idiot off at his room and walks away angrily mumbling that she'll kill him one day. Only the one eye strategist ends up hearing her. The dude manipulates her and asks if she really wants to rejoin the royal guard. Snow being desperate thinks about how hard she worked to become a commander. However, she also values her friends and kind of admits that the trashy dude is better than her. But the strategist is not giving up. He thinks she wants to get rid of her friends as well and offers to help Snow if she can get some evidence that Six is a spy. He hands her some gold to use as an excuse and visit the two Earthlings. Snow half-heartedly walks up to their room thinking about all the moments she's had with Six and the crew. She overhears Six as usual yapping away about women and marrying Snow. However, he ends up mentioning their secret spy mission and Snow bursts in anger and disbelief. The lady immediately tells the two of them to leave. Poor Six is caught red-handed and is left staring at her in his Kisaragi shorts. With the two jokers kicked out, Snow is reassigned as the commander. The strategist thought that Six and Alice left because of Snow and gave her, Rose and Grimma position in the royal guard. However she feels a bit out of place and kind of hates her greedy personality for kicking Six and Alice out. Just then, Rose comes in wheeling Grim. They tell her that the demon army is totally planning to attack them. It looks like they will attack them in a few days. Hearing that, Snow low-key misses Six and Alice. She regrets not giving them a chance to explain themselves. Meanwhile the two kicked out idiots have already found themselves a new place. Six bursts in and goes straight for the bed only for Alice to threaten taking up the whole bathroom and the poor guy has to give it up. Anyways, she notices that Six seems a bit odd and offers to hear the man out. Six scoffs and says that he doesn't really care about this stupid planet. The two then plan on installing their teleportation device and Alice tells Six to just have fun until the device stabilizes. It would take around a month. Just then Alice remembers something and tells Six that she heard about the demon army attacking the humans. She says that the Chosen One has managed to pin one of the Elite Fours however the other elites are now banding together for a massive attack. Six breaks out laughing and says it would serve Snow right for kicking them out. However Alice reminds that most people would lose their heads for being a spy. Six still acts like he doesn't really care about what happens to Snow and his buddies. But he eventually gives in when Alice says that they shouldn't let anyone else take over the planet they want to invade. And so Six ends up crawling around at night teasing women here and there. He would randomly pop out and start shaking his zipper open until the lady runs away and he gets some evil points. The rotten face is totally enjoying it until he runs into some weird lady. He pops out scaring her as well but gets zero evil points. It makes him realize that the woman is actually enjoying his creep stuff. Six tries harder when suddenly a voice confronts him. The dude turns only to see Snow pulling a straight face. Six is totally embarrassed. She asks what he's doing here and the idiot says he's just preparing for the oncoming demon army. Snow gets angry telling him to not lie until Rose breaks up the fight. She asks why Six randomly left the army and he says that it's because Snow is a helpless creep. At that Snow gets irritated and starts walking away. However Six is not done annoying her and tells her to stop being such a stuck up. Snow angrily snaps that she would never ask him for help. The next morning while Six is trying to get a bite to eat he discovers something big. His face is practically plastered everywhere. Six has become famous by the name of Zipperman. Everyone in town starts teasing him and the worthless creep ends up crying to Alice. However she doesn't hold back either and calls him Zipperman as well. It's a consequence of his actions after all. However thanks to Zipperman they've stacked up some evil points and using those he and Alice plant a couple mines for the oncoming demon army. However when they return the next day, a woman tells them that the chosen one has gone missing. Later on the two are in their hideout. When Alice comes in with fresh news, she tells Six that the chosen one was taken away by the same elite that he had managed to pin down. The demon apparently used a random teleport spell, so nobody really knows where he is. In fact he might be a dead by now. She asks Six what really happens to heroes in stories. Six thinks hard and says they usually get defeated and then train until they bounce back and win. Alice points out that maybe Six messed up the timeline for the Chosen One when he attacked Duster Tower. The dude totally freaks out because that means the downfall of Grace Kingdom. Alice starts dishing out options she can either teleport in some massive nuclear weapons or run into the Demon Lord's castle and go kaboom. Six totally disagrees with all and the two end up deciding to run away. Just then the doors burst open and Tilly's walks in. She shows them their parachute bag and confronts them if they are spies. Six immediately admits but to their surprise Tilly's does not arrest them. In fact she collapses on her knees and begs them to warn other kingdoms of the demon army after Grace falls down. Six takes pity and the two ends up back in the castle. Snow, Rose and Grim walk up to them. Snow reveals that Rose and Grim are in the royal guard as well. They'll be the final defense line for the troops. Six the worthless idiot tells them to just run if things get dangerous, making Snow retaliate and deliver her heartfelt speech on being loyal. 
But it looks like Rose and Grimm aren't really feeling the same level of loyalty. Snow totally ticks off and jumps at Six swinging her sword. While the two are fighting and jumping around, Rose comments that they probably like each other. Soon the day of the final war comes. The general tells all the men to fight bravely while Six and Alice are chilling with Tilly's. She's totally worried and turns around only to find Six explaining his stupid conspiracy theory about unicorns. According to him, unicorns are filthy old men who only let cherry boys ride them. Meanwhile the demon army is marching towards the castle. Hein admits to Gadolkan that Six made trouble for her far more than the Chosen One when suddenly a couple of their golems start falling down because of the mines. Just then she spots a sparkle from her magicite and immediately flies down to grab it, not realizing that it's a classic trap. Back at the castle, Tilly's tries to be a part of Six and Alice's worthless talks. She tries to show them a magical trick but the two totally miss it. Just then the demon army finally shows itself. On top of one of the golems is Hein. The poor lady looks like she just got blasted and is angry as hell. It's not long before the demon army has reached the foot of the castle. Snow and Grimm watch the two sides clash from the top. Snow knows that humans won't last long in front of the massive demon army with golems and griffins. She asks if Grimm's got something up her sleeve which she totally does. She brings out a whole stash of engagement rings. She basically got them from couples all over the town to make an offering to Zenareth and start smirking like some wicked witch. Just as the demon army breaks down the doors, Hein comes in totally pissed. She screams for six and promises she won't let the useless creep run away this time. However Grimm drops down and puts a paralysis curse on all the golems making Hein shoot at her. Luckily Snow intercepts the blow and Grimm decides to put another one of her curses. She prays for Hein to lose her flame powers forever. She prepares herself for the impact but nothing really happens. Looks like Grimm has totally failed. However she's optimistic and says she should have asked Zenareth to rip off Hein's talents. Suddenly, their little woman chatter is interrupted when Gadolkan drops in. He swings at Grimm to break her curse but Rose jumps in to save her. Gadolkan swings the little girl into the wall. He's pretty sure the humans have treated the half-demon poorly and wonders why she's even with them in the first place. Rose tidies up and holds her Kisaragi batch. She says her granddad told her to never give up on her friends and gets ready to use Crimson Breath on the Satan from Walmart. However, Snow tells her that she'll handle Gadolkan instead. She's totally terrified but still stands her ground. To her surprise both Grimm and Rose tell her to go save the princess and take over the front line. Meanwhile, Six is desperately trying to escape with Tilly's, but she's refusing to leave. The dude has really bad convincing skills and blurts out that he'll help her continue the bloodline with his seat. This catches the poor lady off guard and Six and Alice manage to run off until they run into Snow. To Six's surprise she looks totally defeated. Snow tells them that Rose and Grimm are holding down Gattelkand and Hein all alone. They probably won't last and so she begs Six to help them out. Snow is totally stingy with money but here she even offers to pay Six everything. However, Six denies like a classic Kisaragi employee. He says he's from an evil organization and so there's no way he's going to play hero. But Snow grabs his arm and pulls out some cute puppy eyes. And just like that the stupid simp gives in. The group ends up on a balcony with Alice telling Six that he totally sucks at being evil. He just yells at her to summon an anti-material rifle but it looks like they can't do that since Alice is out of the evil points. She looks at the worthless idiot and asks if he just spent the rest of their savings on spicy stuff to power his man muscle. The dude looks totally guilty. Alice then angrily tells him to go punch the king and get some points only for Tilly's and Snow to stop him. Snow ends up volunteering and even agrees to let the dude kiss her. Six being the ugly cherry boy totally freaks out. While Tilly's is fangirling like a creep, Six becomes so nervous that he ends up pulling her undies. Down below the war has gotten worse between the demons and humans. Demons are totally winning but then suddenly a shot takes out one of the golems. The demons low-key freak out as more shots turns golems to dust. Turns out, Six has managed to get the anti-material rifle. Six shoots from the balcony with Alice guides him. While poor, Snow is curled in the corner, still traumatized by what just happened. Suddenly Alice tells everyone to get inside. It looks like the Elite Four are about to make a show. The whole group runs in and hides Tilly's just as the bunch of stinky demons land before them. The idiots have no idea that they just walked into a trap once again. Hein angrily screams to Six that he destroyed her magicite. By now Gadolkan have also figured that Six can't really use his rifle often and the demons decide to get close and kill the whole bunch of them. However, Six has got a new trick up his sleeve. Just as Snow steps up and decides to take on the smaller demons, Six tells Alice to summon the Arbus. Both him and Snow then clash and barely manage to hold them off when the buzzsaw finally arrives. The scary looking thing glows neon and Six tells everyone to get back. The dude then releases his suit's safety limits for a second time and attaches the weapon to his mini teleporter. 
But that six goes on a demon killing spree, slashing and slicing the poor demons. At one point the idiot starts spinning like some onion chopper and even Snow loses her shit thinking she's going to die at the creep's hand. By the time six's one minute limit is up he's annihilated the whole place and only Heinz left alive. The lady's properly shitting herself. Luckily, Six lets her be and calls in a one-month truce making Hein finally retreat with the rest of the demon. As Six lies there cooling off, he starts joking and tells Snow to go wash up and get all pretty for him. She had promised she'll do anything if he saves them anyways. Alice and Tilly's then leave to make the victory announcements and to Six's surprise Snow walks up and totally kisses him. Snow says that she knows the cherry boy likes her but she's going to take her time figuring him out. Six just randomly blurts out that he didn't like her. Do was just trying to get a one-night stand. That makes Snow tick off but luckily Six's suit cools down and he runs away with Snow going mad at him. Later on, everyone else begs Six to join them once again and lead the leftover troops of Grace King. Snow says she doesn't know where the duo of idiots came from but she can trust them. Six ends up agreeing and the first thing he does is go rip off the strategist's leftover hair. However Alice tells him that he made a smart move by staying at Grace. She shows him his evil points which have gone negative. Back at Kisaragi if anyone got negative points they get punished and so now he can only go back if the negatives turn into positives. Alice says she'll stay with the dude until he earns all the points. Hearing that, Six happily hugs the tiny robot and calls her his partner before running off to pull some more flashes and get back his evil points. However, Alice is somewhat touched by his words. Days after the war, Six has managed to get video transmission from his home planet. He screams at Asteroth while confronting her for sending him on a mission that didn't even have half the success rate. Asteroth whips out his favorite magazine and says she can make up with him by sending him the latest volume. But Six is totally mad and screams that she can't do that. Asteroth then tells him to submit a proper report and asks why he can't come back home. Of course Six lies and tells her that he can't leave his cute girls behind. Asteroth becomes low-key jealous. She tells him the invasion back home is also facing some difficulties. Lilith and Belial are fighting on the front lines and she really needs Six to handle the invasion on his planet. Six goes crazy and starts shaking the screen saying he can't do that without reinforcements. The stupid creep then steps up and whacks open his zipper taking his sweet revenge by making the poor lady scream. Later on, he and Tiger Man are practicing on the castle grounds. Tiger Man, another one of Kisaragi employees, has a weird habit of ending his sentences with Meow and Six tells him to cut it. However, the cat mutant tells him that it makes the ladies find him cute and the worthless idiot immediately starts copying him. Somehow Six has managed to get his hands on Snow's sword. With that the two clash and Snow's sword crumbles off like biscuits with the first blow. Six totally freaks out and asks Alice to help him up. She just tells the two morons to stick the broken sword back. Just then Snow shows up at the worst time. She says she took a five-year loan for her sword and angrily asks Six to hand the sword back. But the dude standing there hiding the chip sword and quickly makes up a story. The lousy idiot says that her sword went on a sentimental trip to find her original owner. He makes up a sob story and tells her that the sword just got back from the journey and ended up losing to the demon lord. Poor Snow collapses and starts crying over it. That makes Tiger Man take pity on her and hands her his own mutant sword, making Snow all happy and snuggle up to the massive kitty. Six is totally surprised at how famous the cat is. Just then the war bell rings and Snow happily hops off to try her new sword. Later on, Six's unit is celebrating their win by chugging down a bunch of drinks and he once again agrees to pay for everyone. Rose comments that she only likes the useless creep when he's paying for the food. However, Six seems to be getting pretty popular among the girls and starts boasting about it. When suddenly a bunch of tiny rascals show up calling him Stinky Zipper before running away leaving the poor dude screaming. Anyways, Six asks why Snow is following them around and she reveals that Tilly's has asked her to build a connection with Six and Alice's planet. Alice comments that she probably wants to get rid of the stupid lady. Six then asks what she's doing with them because Alice doesn't even eat real food. Alice explains that she is putting up a report on the planet's food for the Kisaragi headquarters. Turns out some of the meat here is sensitive to humans. She points to a dish making Rose reveal that it's ogre's meat making Six almost barf at the whole table. Anyways, Alice then asks Snow to help her with a couple investigations and the greedy lady immediately agrees when Alice promises to pay up as well. Alice, Six and Snow end up in the forest monitoring different animals. They hide behind a bush and watch a Mokmok attack a Supapaki. Mokmok's totally cute but also really scary. Six low-key freaks out like a loser and tell the two of them to leave. However on their way out, Alice comes across a Supapaki literally impaled and hung from a tree. Snow explains that it's the head splitters. These things are just as scary as they sound and split their opponent's head with clubs. They then hang them from trees to mark their territory. Just then, the three of them start hearing the head splitters nearby and Six takes off faster than a Ferrari. The dude ends up alone and runs into Mokmok. 
He totally pisses his pants at first. However, the two of them are about to become friends when Snow literally sliced the poor thing in half and leaves Six screaming like a lady. Later on, the little baby ends up snotty and crying while the girls feast on Mokmo. That's when Rose tells everyone that Grimm took her to some creep Zenerith ritual. She says the second hand wizard summon ghosts and undead. Hearing that Alice shoots up and says it's a declaration of war against her. As someone who believes in science, Alice finds ghosts and gods totally unreal and stupid. She says Zenarith is a made-up thing and that magic is somewhat understandable in terms of science. For example they can equate Hind's flame powers with pyrokinesis, but ghosts and gods are totally baseless. That makes Grimm angry and she challenges Alice to prove her wrong. The two of them end up outside with some sort of creep circle. They even dragged out Six to be the prime witness. Grimm has brought a cute little rabbit as a sacrifice to Zenarith. She brings out a club to hack the little dude but finds it too cute. She tries to pass the ugly deed to Six but when even he refuses Alice decides to take up the role. However the two of them can't see the little rabbit get clubbed and Grimm ends up offering a piece of meat as the sacrifice. She then begins the chants and soon the circle glows and out comes an extremely hot devil lady. Grimm is totally confused because it is definitely not Zenarith at all. It's just a random devil. Six's creep brain cranks up and the muscle head starts drooling at her. She declares that she can grant any wish. And without any hesitation the worthless cherry boy asks for a harem. However Alice is not convinced and says that she's just a hologram. Alice starts shaking the whole circle and asking the devil weird wishes to grant. In the end the devil ends up giving up and Grim returns with her face hanging. Back at their place, Alice writes up a report saying she still doesn't find the ghost devils and gods special. The next day, Tilly's is desperately trying to fire up the rain artifact. She stands before the massive thing yelling out the quirky password Six has put in it. Just then the password master himself shows up telling Tilly's that he understands the troubles girls her age go through. Tilly snaps back saying she's not a creep, it's just the stupid password he's put in the artifact. Turns out because the artifact was fixed Grace Kingdom stopped importing the water stones from Taurus King. However, King Grace ran away and now there's no one to yell out the embarrassing password in front of the audience to get them some rain. Six says she can just do the job in place of her father but Tilly's totally brushes it aside. The little princess insists Six take Snow and his little crew over to Taurus Kingdom and try negotiating for the water stones once again. It's a bit hard since they were the first ones to cut the import off but Tilly's has a creepy idea. It looks like Taurus Crown Prince got some taste for women and if they send Snow to negotiate, the creep would totally fall for her. If they are lucky they can catch him in the act and force the dude to sell them the water stones. Six has no choice but to agree with the sadist and soon he and his crew of mega retards are on their way to Taurus. The whole bunch has never seen a buggy and Grimm is fully enjoying the soothing wind. They've all got their weird comments and Snow even says they can sell the buggy in the rare items market and get some cold hard cash. The lady can think about nothing but money all the time. However, Six tells Grimm to sit down before she rolls off. Just then she spots a couple hags chasing them. Alice speeds up to shake them off but Grimm goes flying off the buggy. Anyways, the whole lot finally reaches Taurus and Six scolds Grimm for always managing to either knock herself out or get hurt before something important. A Taurus official then walks up welcoming them and to Six's surprise Snow jumps into her rizzing element. The lady chummies up to the man and walks off with her arm wrapped around him. Soon all of them get ready for the crown prince's buffet and Grimm dances in towards Six asking if she looks drop dead cute. The loser blurts out that she looks at least a decade too old to wear the dress. Grimm totally flips out and curses the man to never find any lady attractive but Six luckily ducks and the curse flies away. Behind them, Rose Alice and Snow walk in, all ready to attend the party. However the three of them are a total nightmare fuel. While Rose is munching away, Grimm is rizzing random men. Alice starts plotting plans to kick them out the party. She suggests they stab and drag away the evil god minion and knock out Rose with some sleeping shots. However, Snow isn't any less. She's putting up an exaggerated show and dreaming about marrying the filthy rich prince. Alice says her little dream would soon pop once the bald-headed prince with a watermelon stomach walks in. But she totally underestimates Snow's love for money. Soon the doors open and just as Alice said Prince Angel walks in with his ugly fat. Snow immediately clings to the dude calling him the most beautiful man on earth. However this guy does not seem to have any interest in the lady. On the other hand, Grimm starts flipping out once she realizes that the man she's been trying to riz is actually engaged. She screams about being deceived before cursing him only to end up wetting herself. The lady then starts throwing a tantrum on the floor making even a shameless idiot like Six feel totally embarrassed. Anyways, while the ladies are dealing with their hormones Alice and Six decide to take a tour around the castle. The two end up finding some weird green thing. Six predicts that they are probably growing some hot ladies in there when suddenly a tiny little blue demon yells at them. He happens to be Russell. 
one of the Demon Lord's four elites. Six and Alice turns around and he immediately recognizes Six and realizes that he's the one who killed Gadalkan. Six zooms over and grabs Russell by his face when suddenly Hein walks in. The dude's creep muscles go into action and he dives in, grabbing the demon lady by the waist and slapping a pair of handcuffs on her. He then holds her hostage and starts threatening Russell. Alice totally applauds the dude for being a small-time scumbag and says she respects his evil. The man doesn't stop there. He grabs his chance to earn as many evil points as he can and starts tickling Hein before totally rizzing the demon lady. Later, he walks into the buffet and confronts the prince in front of everyone. He says the fatty idiot has been trying to join hands with the demons. Prince Angel tries defending himself and says it's just an alliance pact. However, Snow angrily says that demons would never make a peace pact. As long as the Sand King is turning their land into deserts they'll be pushed to war. Just then Hein walks in and says that's not true. She reveals that the ruins of Taurus have something really special that can possibly defeat the Sand King. With the demon beast come there's no reason for demons to go to war. Prince Angels agrees but there's no way Snow is giving up and the two ladies Hein and Snow desperately try to riz the bald loser. But strangely this dude seems to have lost his man muscles and shoots a creep eye to six. Both women wonder how that came to be and the man says that before the buffet some sort of revelation came to him. Now he's no longer into women. Just then the prince shoots six a glance and the poor guy totally collapses and realizes that the prince is serious. In fact he might be into guys now. Six then tells Alice to cover for him before walking up to Angel and asking if he wants to spice up his party. Angel agrees and the retarded creep walks up to the prince before unzipping his shorts and giving the prince of Taurus a nice top knot with his junk. The whole bunch of them fail so hard at negotiating that Taurus ends up declaring war on Grace and Tilly's demote Snow once again. She then sends the stupid crew to the Tezan Desert on a mission to find the rare water nuts. However this place happens to be the Sand King's territory. The unit then makes it towards the desert. Six asks Grim what would have happened to the curse that missed him. She says that it probably traveled until it hit someone else. Six realizes that it probably hit the Taurus Prince and that's why he is a total nun now. Once she realizes that she tells Six to shut up and keep it a secret but the dude announces it to everyone and blaming her for the war. With that the two start fighting once again. Luckily the whole troop manages to safely plop into the Tezan Desert and even end up finding a lot of water nut trees. While Snow happily picks them off, Six closely analyzes the teeny tiny nuts. It looks really small to him but it's actually compressed with the help of magic. Alice says she doesn't believe in the magic making Grim tick off once again. She angrily says that Xenareth will surely punish the stupid robot one day. Just then Rose tells others that she smells something delicious, like a massive hunk of meat and suddenly the whole ground starts shaking. Grim totally thinks it's Xenareth's wrath. However, Alice quickly fills the bunch into their dessert buggy and the whole lot speeds away just as a massive creature breaks out from under the desert sand. Turns out it's a gigantic mole and the water nut trees were basically a part of its body which stored the water for it. There's no way the group of retards are going to outrun this one and so Alice tells them to jump off. All of them hop off and with that the buggy blasts away taking down the massive mole and the water nuts with it. Poor Snow's face falls farther than Niagara Falls. She sobs at the mission becoming a total failure. Six then asks how they are going to get out of the desert. And so with no choice left Six's unit begins crossing the vast valleys of sand on foot. Turns out, Six is the most lucky out of all. Thanks to his armor he can regulate heat but the rest of the members are totally frying up under the sun. With that, Six still got the guts to joke around and tells Snow to just strip if she feels hot. Rose tells the two to shut up. Poor thing is carrying Grim all alone. All because she died on literally the first day of their desert field trip. Anyways they need to eat and Six announces that they are going to munch on the next thing that crosses their path. Minutes later the same Six is now screaming and refusing to eat up an ogre. While Rose grabs the whiny dude, he trashes around asking Alice to help him out. She replies that, according to her research, ogres are completely fine to eat and Snow begins the process of force feeding the massive baby. She starts with a pair of juicy ogre junk making poor Six scream for the heavens and hell. Using the last bit of their evil points Alice summons a tent and the group gets to at least rest under a roof. However they are getting desperate and Alice tells Six to yank down some undies. Of course it is the creep's favorite game and he starts deciding on his victims. Snow and Rose are totally angry at him when suddenly Alice points to the knocked out Grim. Six has got no chill and he shamelessly air out Grim's undies while she's totally out. At least that gets him some evil points. However, by day 4 he's no longer able to cash it and now the whole group has decided to travel only through the night. It gets them away from the desert sun but also means that they can hardly hunt any creatures. Day 6 is worse and the whole lot of them is totally starving. Alice has to literally spray Grim with preservatives to keep her stupid body in one piece. 
By day 7, Snow gives in and presents herself. However, despite doing the deed, they earn no evil points and Six blames the psycho Snow of enjoying the process. Six notices that nobody even tries to stop the two of them from fighting. In fact Rose looks like she's waiting on someone to die so she can munch away at the buffet. However, Six's mind is still totally rotten. Even in the middle of a desert he somehow thinks that doing the deed would get him some evil points. The creep even considers Rose but realizes he's going to get in some serious trouble if he makes a move on her. His only choice is Snow. And so later on, he just tells the lady to give in and even offers to pay off her loan if she agrees to get spicy. However, before Snow could even consent, she collapses and now they've got one dead and one half-dead body lying around. Just then Rose crawls up to Six and admits she's been thinking of doing some things to him. She starts getting all chummy and asks if he likes carnivores. At this point Six is desperate and replies that he does like carnivores. He gives it a second thought and thinks that it's an emergency. In his brain it's alright to do extreme things in dire situations. It doesn't take long for the creep commander to plop Alice out of the tent and get ready for some action. Only it seems like Rose is being a bit too aggressive. At first Six likes that but then he starts getting suspicious. Suddenly Alice comes back in suggesting that maybe Rose means something else and it turns out she wanted to munch him down. Six eats out from under her. However the little chimera devil has totally lost it. She isn't giving up on free food and starts screaming that Six just said he liked carnivores. Six has no choice and tells Rose to bring it on. With that Alice sits out polishing her shotgun while the two of them are having a cat dog fight inside. It ends up earning them a ton of evil points and the next day the group finally manages to get a buggy and make their way back into Grace Kingdom. Six and Alice once again appear before Tilly's with a totally failed mission. She tells the two that Taurus and demons are now working together to wage a war against Grace. The lady totally blames Six and Alice which is actually true but it makes no difference to the shameless duo. They just call her a shithead. Anyways Tilly's then shows them the map of the ruins Hein had mentioned in Taurus. She says Hein and Russell are investigating the place for a weapon that can wipe out the Sand King. Tilly's wants the two earthlings to stop them and Six excitedly gets ready. However Alice suggests stealing the weapon instead. Meanwhile back on Earth, Kisaragi are having a blast. After defeating the heroes, they have thrown a massive party to its employees. Belil is swimming around having fun but Asteroth is still worried about her stupid crush Six. He's still working hard on the invasion thing and Asteroth finds it a little unfair. However Belil just tells her to relax and go swimming. The two have no idea that Lilith has started to live stream them secretly. The lady has some weird cameras peering at the two supreme leaders absolutely supreme talents and dishing it out to the whole world. Meanwhile back in Grace Kingdom, Six drops off Grimm at the altar and arrives back at their place. Along with Alice and Tiger Man, Six discuss about their next mission. However the creep dude is a bit pissed over Asteroth banning him from going into negative points. Because of that they had to suffer in the desert. Alice tries to say something when suddenly a mail beeps on the computer screen. It turns out to be Lilith's mail with the link to the spicy live stream. Six can't believe his eyes and the shameless idiot totally starts drooling at it. Back at the party everyone is paying attention to the employee's survey making Asteroth ask whose stupid idea it was. It happens to be the product of none other but Six's useless brain. Lilith explains that he thought of the idea after two female mutants took an interest in him, while secretly filming the two from under the table. Alice realizes that the live stream is Lilith's plan to gain more votes in the survey and win it. Turns out she's just making the viewers watch and subscribe on her site. The poor mid-looking lady tries to desperately sell herself only to end up as a total failure. Meanwhile, Belil starts talking about betting on who will win the survey. Right now, she's the most popular one but Belil insists that Asteroth's quite popular as well. The little talentless scientist is by far the most unpopular, but she's totally optimistic. Lilith confidently says that she's going to be this year's employee of the year. However, Asteroth pretends that she isn't really interested in the results of the stupid survey until Lilith asks if she is interested who Six voted for. The Ice Lady literally turns tomato red. Watching the three of them, Six wonders how screwed Lilith will be when they find out about the live stream. Yet the freaky scientist has found a new gig to cash and starts pressurizing Asteroth to talk out about her lovey-dovey feelings for the retarded Six. Asteroth continues and tells the two of them about Six never complaining about his stupid pay and always going on hard missions. It's not really true and when Balil and Lilith point that out she gets irritated. Asteroth admits that she tries to ignore Six's constant complaints and whining. And that's when Lilith realizes she getting a bit serious. Dude tries her best to put a stop to her passionate love talk but Belil's totally supporting Asteroth in her love dumping. Lilith has no choice and shoots some fireworks to silence her. Just then Asteroth walks up to the balcony and finds the live stream rolling. She and Belil finally realize that they are being filmed and glare back at Lilith only to blast her off. 
Once the live stream ends, Asteroth goes mad embarrassed. Lilith tries making up to her and immediately calls Six only for the dude to come on screen and announce that he just filmed everything and will watch it on replay. Poor Asteroth gets even more embarrassed and dives straight into the pool. Lilith then points out that they should check the survey results. After all Asteroth's passionate speech must have given her a boost. But lo and behold it's Lilith who's strangely on the top. Belil immediately accuses her of cheating. But Lilith counterclaims until Asteroth notices that she has more votes than employees on Kisaragi. The idiot is caught red-handed and finally admits cheating only to get exploded once again. Yet Lilith ends up on the top of the survey for the second time. Turns out she had a plan B and had literally hired new agents just to make them vote on her. Asteroth asks her how would she even pay them and Lilith laughs saying that she simply won't. After all they're an evil society. She then calls Asteroth and Belil bunch of losers who are too good to be evil. Lilith then suggests ending the survey and using her salary to pay the new employees. Belil snaps that it won't be enough making the tiny lady flip out. She blames the two of them for being so rizzing and hogging all the attention. Lilith goes in for some teasing before she is exploded and frozen for the third time. Belil and Asteroth then decide to fire all the extra employees and hand out gift cards to the rest of them. However, Asteroth goes back to the main topic and tries to ask Six who he voted for. Suddenly they're interrupted by the heroes attacking. Thanks to Lilith's stream the party's location was leaked to the whole world. The worthless freak tries sneaking out once Belil gets distracted by an employee's phone call. Anyways, everyone prepares to fight and Asteroth promises to ask Six about the voting. Once the fight is over, she then gives a last order to Six and tells him not to lose to the demon army. Once the screen cuts off, Six just angrily stomps off. Behind him Alice reveals that it was her who banned him from using negative points in the dessert. The clever little robot would use it to her benefit by trapping Six. The next day Alice lays out the master plan. She explains that Grace's knights would handle the Taurus army while Tiger Man will be sent to kick some demons. The poor cat kind of freaks out, making Six say that he's a strong mutant but probably not strong enough to tackle a whole lot of demons. Alice then points at the jungles surrounding the area and Tiger Man immediately gets confident. After all, the jungle is literally his personal playground. He agrees to handle the stinky creatures alone and with that Alice announces that they'll attempt to hack the weapon from the ruins before the enemy. Once they've done that they can sweetly blackmail them into surrendering. Six and Tiger Man clap for the genius little robot. Soon Six and his crew of retards are on their way to Taurus. They have decided to head out immediately because then they'll only to have to face Hine and Russell. It would be an easy win. However Rose brings up the fantastic top knot Six gave to Prince Angel back in Taurus. She says he's a total moron. Six snaps back saying she tried to gobble him up as well only to realize that the dumb chimera has no memories of it. While Rose violently shakes Six to tell her everything, Snow sobs rivers in the back. Poor lady got a pay cut once again. Six tries to cheer her up by saying that he literally spends his whole paycheck every month and still remains happy. However Alice interrupts saying that's because she gives the idiot an allowance. She then promises Snow to give her an allowance as well that is if she shuts up. Snow goes totally happy and says she'll even kill her parents for money. Six whispers that Snow's evil enough to be hired into Kisaragi but Alice disagrees. To her she's just a wannabe evil. Anyways the group soon arrives in Taurus. They find Hein and Russell taking a break down by the ruins entrance. Down below Hein and Russell walk out of the ruins. They took a lot of traps and creatures out and Russell is happy that they are closer to their goal. Hein cutely pats the little boy's head and tells him that he did a good job with his magic. She tells him to rest now. However, Russell ends up being annoyed and rushes off telling her to stop treating him like a kid. From above Six and his scumbag unit peers down at them. Looks like the demon group has already been trying to advance into the ruins and clear all traps and creatures. Grimm suggests that they head in right now and attack the demons. She thinks they should make the most out of it since her powers are at their peak during nightfall. Six just sarcastically comments that he can't remember the last time her stupid occult powers were useful. She's always literally snoozing. But before Grimm could throw some massive tantrum snow jumps in. She tries her chance at being evil and laughs like Six. The lady tries hard and says they should just attack them at night while they're resting. She even makes a somewhat creepy face and Rose ends up copying her. Grim angrily tells Snow to stop acting like Six and not do stupid stuff in front of a kid like Rose. Yet Snow looks over to Six and Alice for some evil validation only to realize that she's a total noob. Six then gets down to real evil and says they'll wait out till the morning. Then they'll follow Hine and Russell into the ruins and quietly trail them. They'll do all the trap clearing work for them and just as they've finally reached their goal, Six's sadist unit will drop and steal away the weapon. Alice applauds the dude for being the ultimate psycho and Snow low-key loses it at the guy. The next day, the group tiptoes past the snoozing ogres and into the ruins. Alice realizes that this place has some huge gap between civilizations. The ruins look like something right out of sci-fi. It must have been an advanced civilization. 
While she analyzes broken robot bits, the greedy silver head is desperately trying to shove out a couple chunks to sell for cash. Anyways they run into Hein and wrestle annihilating a couple massive robots. The creep commander and his crew hide, watching them slowly clear the traps. At one point the two demons accidentally walk into a trap and Hein gets hurt trying to save Russell. Russell helps heal her and tells Hein that he's quite tough and doesn't need Hein to protect him. However Hein says she has to because he is the only one who can start the robot and help them defeat the Sand King. Russell smiles and promises to not die before he has completed his duty. Hein then stands up and tells him that she'd still protect him after the duty is done. That's because he's a little kid and got to live more of his life. With that the two walk into the final chamber and Six turns to Grim. He asks her to put a curse on the two of them. However in order to do that Grim got to yell it out loud. For a second Snow and Rose feel bad for Hein and Russell but the moment Alice mentions the allowance, the money liquor comes back in line. Rose too is totally easy to manipulate with food. Meanwhile Hein and Russell finally make it into the chamber. Before them is the ultimate weapon, a massive robot. Russell explains that it was used to annihilate the stupid humans but now it will help them kill Sand King for good. However the Chimera seems to have some personal beef with humans as well. His creator hated them and wanted Russell to kill off humanity. Hein disagrees at first but then remembers Six's ugly face. She shivers in anger saying she wants to kill that creep idiot as well. All while the two of them have no idea that the loser in question is behind them. Just as Russell gets to the control board and readies to fire it up, Six literally kicks the poor boy. The dude collapses foaming in the mouth and Hein freaks out. She screams that it took them days to do all the hard work and finally make it to the chamber. He can't just waltz in and take all their hard work from them. Six just laughs and says that they are the bad guys and it's their job before leaning and confronting the demon lady about wanting to kill him. She totally backs up and refuses that she said anything. However, Six threatens to hurt Russell if she tries to do anything when suddenly Alice tells everyone that the Chimera boy has stopped breathing. For some reason the Kisaragi retards take pity and help Russell back to life. However, Six grabs him by the neck and asks him to fire the robot up. Russell returns to the control board but looks at Six before smiling and shooting off into the massive thing. The worthless idiot realizes he just messed up and grabs Hein, trying to threaten Russell. But both of them look totally unbothered and Hein teleports herself before Six could snag another one of her magicite. Alice congratulates Six and it turns out that the man has managed to rip off the demon lady's undies before she zapped out. Poor Hein grandly appears at the demon castle presenting a full show of her talents. Back in the ruins, Six starts acting like the rascal he is and waves Hein's undies at Russell. The dude totally ticks him off and the group runs back into the halls only to exit the ruins and find Russell with the massive robot already waiting to welcome the retarded idiot. The five of them immediately run back into the ruins leaving Russell pounding on the walls. While he's going crazy at it, Six and his little minions chill inside thinking of their next move. Snow is greedily hopping around grabbing whatever valuable stuff she finds to cash out. Six then asks Grim if she can curse the robots as well. She says she can if the robot is a magical creature. Grim then looks at Alice and as expected, she once again denies believing in stupidity like magic. It ticks off the wheelchair sucker and she ends up cursing Alice only to get hit herself and once again snooze off right before a critical fight. Six is totally frustrated and even thinks of handing Snow over to the demons when suddenly Rose interrupts. She explains that Russell is a chimera just like her. She can probably convince the dude and even get some information about her past from him. Six the useless man gets all hopeful for a second and totally allows the little girl to go on. But then he realizes that Asteroth would absolutely blast him if she gets to know that he had put a little child's life on mine. And so Six ends up refusing Rose, making her a bit irritated. He's got no choice but to turn to Alice. She presents three risks in her grand plan. One, they have to give up on recovering the robot and two, Six got to use up some negative points. She finally reveals that it was her who banned him from using the negative points. However Six is low-key grateful because even he knows his terrible spending habits. Anyways Alice then tells the last risk that Six would have to buy them some sweet time. Six cheers up and yaps that stalling is his specialty. Alice says she doesn't really trust his rotten brain but she knows he's a strong partner. With that she and Six part way with Six heading out to have a little dance with Russell. Alice, Snow and Rose make it further into the ruins. Rose asks what they are going to do and Alice explains that they'll use the innermost chamber to build another massive robot. However the longer they take the more likely Six is to bite the dust. Outside Russell orders the demons to head inside and flush out the losers. However the moment they do so, poor ogres come flying right out. 
Six hops out of the ruins and into the battlefield, ready to annoy the hell out of Russell. His first tactic is to tire the robot's energy source but it's of no use because the robot runs on its driver's energy source. Russell is a chimera which means he can keep the massive thing going for hours. He also figures out that Six is probably trying to stall him and decides to go after the girls. But the annoying idiot isn't giving up and starts irritating Russell so much that he's forced to focus on Six hopping around. Six then throws a bright light right in Russell's face before summoning a heck ton of weapons. But that he gets ready and the worthless commander goes lethal at the massive thing shooting, slashing and attacking it. When Russell once again tries to return to the ruins, Six whips out his ultimate weapon the buzzsaw and slashes a whole slit into the robot's legs. Russell trips and the whole thing comes crashing down onto the dumb idiot. Finally Russell manages to grab Six and promise that he'll give him a hard death when suddenly the ruin behind them crumbles down. Russell turns around to find a gigantic four-legged creature strolling into the party. Six smirks realizing that it's Kisaraga's ultimate weapon, the Destroyer. With that Russell lets go of Six and turns to the Destroyer. Six shoots Alice a thumbs up and the two giant robots come clashing with a massive blast. Later on, Six wakes up bandaged in a bed. He finds Alice beside him. She has injected him with more nanobots for some extra health. Alice then explains that they ended up winning the battle. The ancient robot that Russell was driving around is totally scrapped. Six smirks knowing that the destroyer was capable of it all along. He asks if Alice is alright. She says she took some damage making Six get really worried but she continues saying that it took a couple negative points to get the destroyer. Plus the destroyer has some damages however she can patch it up. Six tries to interrupt and clear that he was asking if she's okay, not the destroyer. But the guy stops himself and plops back onto the bed. Alice then explains that she used the destroyer to threaten the Taurus army while Snow and Rose then capture Russell. Six can't be more happy in fact Six says that he has some plans on how to deal with the kid. Anyways, Tiger Man was successful in defeating the demon army in the jungles. Now Russell is locked up and Grace Kingdom is in the process of peace talks with Taurus. Luckily they've also completed their Kisaragi mission. All they have to do now is earn some positive points and go back home. Six relaxes back into his bed when suddenly Alice starts taking the dude's shorts off. He totally freaks out only for Alice to reveal that she was literally cleaning up his waist while he was out for three days. The worthless idiot is totally ashamed but accepts his fate. However he's grateful for Alice being there for him. She says that she'll probably be there to nurse him when he's old. Robots never age anyways. Immediately, Six realizes his sad luck and says he probably has no chance with Grimm, Rose, Snow or Asteroth. So he'll settle for the little Alice. He creepily tells her to ask Kisaragi and get herself a good pair of talents. The two then walk down to Russell and offer him to join hands and produce water for them. When Russell refuses to agree they unleash the Tiger Man. The cat is a total creep and is attracted to tiny little boys. He scares poor Russell into wearing a cute little dress and the dude finally agrees to make water for the Grace King. Later on, Six and his crew are chilling outside. Grim is sitting there complaining about not getting her very own action scene in the battle. She whines that only bad things have happened to her ever since she joined the stupid unit. She always passes out and wakes up at the altar with everything wrapped up. Six annoyingly comments that she's totally comic relief for them anyways plus it's not his problem that she knocks herself out all the time. He then tells her to just leave the unit if she wants to but the lady starts throwing a tantrum. She literally latches onto Six and he angrily tells her to just walk. Grim reminds him that she can't because she's cursed and can never wear shoes. That gives him a bright idea and he turns to Alice asking her to get him a pair of socks. The two then forcefully put it on her with poor Grim screaming and repenting to Zenareth. Seconds later the wheelchair queen goes kaboom, dying once again and their commotion is heard all the way till Tilly's chambers. Meanwhile on Demon Land, Hind swears to avenge her fallen demons while back on Earth. Asteroth notes the mission's success and it's revealed that the Chosen One had teleported to Earth and is now Kisaraga's agent. Anyways, Six and Alice lay watching the stars and the Earth's biggest creep screams that he's going to build himself a massive harem. Thanks for watching till this long my fellow men of culture. Don't forget to tell us about your favorite waifu from this anime and subscribe to the channel for more content.